Hey. Okay. Welcome to the show, Mr. Noda. How uh, are you Thank tonight? you, Mr. Rika, for inviting me. Yes. How are you? I'm doing good, and uh, please call me Kaz. And okay, how Kaz. do I address you? Uh, you can call me Koichi. Koichi. So yeah. when you came to America the first time, I mean, for your business school yes. experience, did you go by Koichi? Yeah, I, I was called uh, Koichi. Okay. So. Uh, uh, some of the American people had a difficulty uh, to call me Koichi because a vowel is uh, connected O and I, and it's very difficult to pronounce for them. Right, it's three syllables, yeah. almost like Koichi. Yeah, right. Ko, Koichi. <laughs> Someone called me Koichi or something. <laughs> American people like to sh uh, shorten names, people's names, because it's easy to... Uh, right. right, yeah. So uh, today's topic is just that maybe you can share your experiences mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. in learning English, or you may have your views about English education in Japan, or okay. the role of English in the globalized economy, or whatever <laughs> uh, leads us to. Uh, so, um, but maybe you can start by introducing yourself to our audience. Okay, sure, no problem. Uh, my name is Koichi Noda. I uh, graduated from university in 1988, so it's about uh, 25 years ago. And after graduating the college, I worked for the bank of uh, Mitsubishi, Mitsubishi Ginko. Uh, now its name is uh, uh, Tokyo Mitsubishi UFJ Ginko. It's a long name. I worked there for 11 years and then got the opportunity to study at Harvard Business School to earn a master degree on business, business administration. So I was uh, in Harvard Business School from 1996 to 1998. And after coming back to Japan, after getting MBA, I thought I want to do uh, uh, something which I can exercise the general management which I learned at Harvard. So I quit the bank and at that time uh, it took me a uh, courage to quit the bank and uh, change the job because at that time it was uh, uh, rare for the people who working for the bank change his job. So uh, I talked, uh, I, at that time I had the opportunity to meet with Mr. Mikitani, who is the founder and CEO of Rakuten, because he is also the Harvard MBA, and there was a, a gathering of, uh, among the Harvard alumni. So I, uh, after the session, I, I went up to him and talked about my situation, and he told me that, uh, Mr. Noda, do you know the biggest risk in your life, it is to regret later in your life. So do what you want to do. Uh, there's nothing to lose, even if you change the job. So that pushed me to change my uh, job. So I, th at that time, I, I, I quit the bank and I joined a very small company, a manufacturing venture company. So uh, the number of employees was just uh, 100. So I, I joined a company called Inks Inc. and I did uh, general management. So it, since it was a very small company, uh, I did everything from sales, marketing, uh, general, general administration, HR, accounting, and finance. And I learned a lot of things about general management. And five years passed, and in 2004, I became 38 years old. And I, in January, I thought about myself, about my age. I, I, I am 38 years old, and think about it. And at that time, I thought at the age of 50 is the maximum age that you can work 100% uh, uh, energetic, mentally and physically. And then 38 years old is just 12 years until the 50 years old. Oh God, uh, I have only 12 years so I need to do something that I can enjoy myself and I can, I can grow as much as possible. Then I thought about, about the company Rakuten. So I, again, I went up to Mr. Mikitani and asked him whether I can join Rakuten. And he said, no, no problem, come to, come to join Rakuten. So in, in 2004, I joined Rakuten. 
And I did uh, many things like sales, marketing, strategy building, uh, M&A, corporate planning, and HR. And nine years has passed now where I am today. That's all about it. Wow, what a what a career <laughs> of uh, entire span of coming <laughs> range. Uh, yeah. <laughs> starting from uh, you're quitting your job, and how did it go? Yeah. Were you nervous? Did you have to submit the letter, <laughs> or did you just have to tell them the first time you well, quit? Well, uh, of course, I was very nervous because I, I love working in bank, and I didn't hate bank at all. And I was very grateful about what they told me. So I was very nervous uh, talking with my boss or talking to my colleagues, uh, but I, I didn't hesitate at the same time. Do you feel you made a really great decision there to look back now? And uh, Looking back, I, it was one of the best decisions that I made because after quitting the bank, I could uh, experience a lot of things. And since uh, bank was a big organization, I didn't have to do everything. But after changing my job and joining the very small venture company, I did have to do everything from dirty work from, uh, to the general management. So I think I could grow a lot after quitting the bank. You have been raising very interesting qu I mean, points. Like one of them is mm -hmm. like the size of the company. Uh, if you work for a small company, you are expected to do a lot of things, which is a yeah. challenge. Like for a person yes. like myself, because I'm really specialized in a technical field of evaluating educational mm -hmm. interventions, I feel comfortable working in a big company. But yeah. I once worked for a small company and you're expected to do everything. And That's but, right. Yeah, that probably but gives you a really well-rounded background in business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, at Harvard, you have to study a lot of things uh, as well. Uh, especially in Harvard Business School, <clears throat> basically the class is done by a case study method. And you will, you will learn about uh, more than 800 cases in two years. So you will learn uh, virtually uh, almost any occasions by case studied, but it's, it's just a case studied and it's not a true experience. And after joining, after joining the very small company, I could experience just uh, I, I could experience what I learned in Harvard Business School. So actually, I could exercise what I learned in case studies. So that was a quite a, a good experience. I always wondered how is it, is it is possible to study business in two years in a business school, but mm -hmm. it seems like by using case studies, you are connecting the real world with the classroom. Is That's it, right. It, was it always successful, or was there anything uh, that was a little difficult to do in business? It's, uh, it's very. Uh, I think it's very uh, successful, but at the same time, as you said, it's very hard. Uh, hard experience, and especially for Japanese who hadn't uh, lived abroad before that, it was a very uh, big challenge. You have to read a lot of uh, reading materials before studying, studying uh, classes. Every day you have three classes, so you need to read about, uh, I say, I would say uh, 200 pages per day. So right after classes, I go home and uh, started to study about seven or eight years. After that, you will have a group study session uh, where the, your friends uh, gather in one room and start discussion because in case study, just reading the cases is not enough and you have to uh, make a contribution by participating in the class. So you have to make an argument or make a lot of questions. So you have to prepare how to speak uh, in a class, so that's a lot of work. Uh, did you have any difficulty initially to participate in discussion with uh, other uh, American people or other foreign nationals? Well, I say I would say it's it was not easy. But in my case, uh, what was good for me is that I uh, enjoyed and I practiced, I I learned uh, how to debate when I was a. Uh, college student in Waseda University. In Waseda, 
I was a member of an English speaking society and I was、uh, in the debate club. So I learned a debate、uh, when I was in high school and university. And、uh, what I learned in debate、uh, helped a lot in Harvard Business School. It's interesting as I'm interviewing you because you're giving us so much full details. It's almost like I don't have to ask you many questions. <laughs> 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 so, which is good. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs>、um, yeah so,、uh, you went to the US, you came back, and、uh, you started a new、um, company. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but you came back, but you were able to utilize c o n n e c t i o n that you found in the US through. Right.、Uh, I guess. Yeah. Do you still、right. keep contacts with people from、uh, the business school? Yes.、Uh... My class was, my class was consist of、uh, 80 students. And I was the only Japanese student. So every time one of the classmates、uh, visits Japan, they email or call me and、uh, I, 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 I meet with him. He, I meet with him or her and have a chat or have a dinner or lunch or something. Yeah. It's like the、uh, maintaining a benefit from social capital that you accumulated or collected from going to the great school. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah.、Um, so, your connection with Mr. Mikitani, so you、mm-hmm. received a word of wisdom from him about how,、uh, I mean, something about regretting. Yeah. How exactly did he say it in Japanese? えー、人生における最大のリスクっていうのは、えー、後悔することだと。なので、えー、何かやり,たやりたいことがあれば、えー、やっちゃえばいいじゃないかと。そんなのはリスクでも何でもないよと。That's what he said. Oftentimes, to take the new risk, you have to quit something. So、mm-hmm. you kind of compare the risk from not doing the new thing versus the risk of continuing with the new, I mean, old way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in Japan, I think、uh, persistence is considered to be a great virtue. You have to really yeah, yeah, yeah. continue to finish something, otherwise, people may consider you as a quitter. So, how do you advise to people who are listening to this conversation about、yeah. making the balance? Yeah, yeah, it's a good point. But、uh, especially in Japan,、uh, many people say doing something new is risky. And、uh, maintaining、uh, the same thing is a good,、uh, good thing. But you have to realize that、uh, continuing the same thing is as risky as doing something new. So <laughs> anything is risk and opportunity. So、uh, I, w- I, w- I, w- I would like to say if, if you have something that you want to do, why don't you try it? And if you fail, then you can improve it or, or stop it. So anything is an opportunity. Now,、uh, you've worked at、uh, for Rakuten for the past nine years. Yes. So, how is it like to be working in the company? And also, are you like one of the masterminds behind this policy of English only for business in the company?、Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, I've been in Rakuten in nine years, and this nine years is something like、uh, 30 years' experience for me. At the same, same time, since、uh, I've been working so hard and so busy, I feel like it's just uh, with, uh, uh, two or three years. So, it's a very strange feeling. And、uh, For the past few years, I'm in charge of、uh, HR or human resources or Jinjibu in Japan.、Right. And Jinjibu uh, uh, initiates uh, what we call in Rakuten Englishization, in which、uh, we converted our official language from Japanese into English. And I, I'm initiating that project. We officially converted our,、uh, our official language into English. Uh, July of last year, so it's about、uh, more than a year. So,、uh, how has it been? Like, are people improving their English? And I understand that you are using TOEIC, for example, or you、mm-hmm. are introducing lots of seminar activities, as I yeah, understand yeah. it. So,、uh, they improved a lot. 
I don't have an exact number here because I'm at home, uh, but uh, for, the past two, for the past two years, the average score of TOEIC has improved more than 200 points. So it's a great improvement. It's a little bit uh, shocking and difficult to think about because when you think about language study, you always think about one person or two, right? But mm -hmm. you are collectively improving your score, yeah. which is amazing. Yeah, this average is made up with uh, more than 2,000 employees. <laughs> it's a big number. And, and you're talking about the growth, not the uh, level of uh, like static level. At yeah. The, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But are you more likely to be, um, I mean, maybe the company like Rakuten attracts people who are mm -hmm. interested in uh, learning language anyways to begin with yeah so there's some yeah. self-selection going on mm -hmm. yes uh, and uh, many many uh, Japanese uh, college students who like to work abroad or who like to do some international business and who are good at uh, speaking English are applying to Rakuten right. to be a, yeah at the same time uh, it's good for acquiring uh, very good talent from uh, international job market. So now we don't have to hire only Japanese, but we can hire any nationalities as long as they are good. And I'm getting a lot of resumes from China, India, uh, US, European countries, and a lot of people are getting interested in working at, in working in Rakuten. So Sounds like you yeah. I'm sorry, okay, go, go ahead. ahead. You can finish your thought. Sorry, go ahead. So, uh, English in, Englishization uh, is uh, good for acquiring a good, good talent. Speaking of English, um, mm -hmm. you yourself have been studying English very uh, religiously, enthusiastically, I, I believe. Yeah, uh, it's partly because I have to do it because I'm in charge of uh, initiating this Englishization project. But at the same time, I, I really enjoy studying English, studying English, and uh, I enjoy uh, what I'm doing. I want to check yeah. one more fact. So you said you are the person who really initiated mm -hmm. it. Yes, yes. I How am. did you initiate it? Did you say, oh, by the way, mm -hmm. so you are the real first person who said in Japanese uh, no, perhaps. That's not true, that's oh. not true. And the first, pers the first person who said about this project is Mr. Mikitani. Oh. He did, he, he told it by himself. So it was uh, about, uh, I think it was uh, four years ago that he suddenly announced in front of the employees that we would change our official language into English. And your reaction was, oh my God. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, I didn't. Know, so I, I I wasn't surprised at him, but uh, a lot of employees were shocked to hear his comment. Yeah, if it was uh, me, we, we, I... we, uh, we have a old old company meeting uh, called Asakai, mm -hmm. and we we do it every Tuesday morning at eight eight a.m. and every week, Mister Mikitani uh, make a speech at the beginning. And he used to speak in Japanese, but at that moment, he started to speak in English and announced that we'll change our official language into English in two years. So that was a very shock to every employee. Do you, actually, if it's me, I would feel it, feel it would be like, actually, it's easier to speak English because somehow, uh, human relationship. I mean, English is less hierarchical than Japanese, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you often hear about like the uh, uh, airplane accidents sometimes in, in the co cockpit conversation. Uh, I think this happened to Koreans when they analyzed how pilots, pilot and the co-pilot spoke with each, each other in Korean. They mm -hmm. found that there's some obstacle of overcoming the age difference and the judgment yeah. in the cockpit or was kind of compromised or undermined. You know, so it's true that English is less kind of hierarchical, even people of different age or different experiences. So maybe that makes it easier to communicate, especially in the business communicate. I mean, situation that involves lots of decisions and knowledge transfer. Yeah, I agree with it. English is a very straightforward language and uh, it's very 
conclusion is clear, and I think it's a uh, good language for doing the business. But uh, if we if we say some, uh, something like that, many people he disagree that uh, English is uh, not just a straightforward language and. Uh, in English, there there is a polite way of doing uh, expressing expression, but yeah. Anyway, uh, English is is a good language for business, I believe. Yeah. I want to go into your initial um, experience with learning English. Maybe you can go back mm -hmm. to like way back okay. and tell us how you yeah started. How I started? Okay, uh, I started. Uh, learning English when I was uh, 12 years old. So when I was a, a junior high school student, mm -hmm. as many people did. Right. Uh, that, uh, when I was in junior high school, English is just one of the subjects among many subjects. So I didn't study very hard. But when I, I entered high school, uh, one day I, f I found a book in my father's bookshelf written by Michihiro Matsumoto, uh, entitled Watashi wa Koushite Ego Mananda. And uh, after reading that book, I was shocked, uh, very shocked. And I realized that I, need, I needed to study English really hard. So I decided to join the ESS, or English Speaking Society of the high school. And that's when I started uh, to study English very hard. And uh, in high school, I learned to debate. And uh, in university, I, <clears throat> I also, again, I joined uh, ESS and I continued to uh, learn debate. So, uh, and then I kept to studying English since then. It's interesting that many people found Matsumoto Michihiro's book in the house. Mm -hmm. Like I heard that from Mr. Ueda, you know him. Oh uh, yeah, another Kodokan member, and mm -hmm. um, uh, also myself. I found it at the second-hand bookstore. Yeah, so nobody so, uh, actually has bought it <laughs> on their own. But there are many uh, books about uh, learning how to learn English. But uh, Matsumoto Michihiro's book uh, was not about how to learn English, but the book uh, can give you the motivation to learn English, or why you have to learn English, or what do you do with using English. So his, in, his books are totally different from other books, and his books can put a fire on everyone. <laughs> So I still keeping this his book, Watashi wa Koushite Ego Mananda, or Time wo Yomu. Right. Or uh, this is about himself, Ego Do. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Or Sokudoku no Ego, Speed. How to uh, read English fast. Or Ego ga naiteiru. Ego is crying out. In English is crying. Okay. <laughs> the, the, the English is crying. To me, so Mr. Yeah. Uh, Matsumoto's approach um, really leads to a very concrete practice. For example, I was reading newspaper when I was in college. I mm -hmm. think because I read something about Sokudoku and he was mm -hmm. talking about the importance of reading English. So. So I read it and then I actually practiced it. So there was mm -hmm. some consistency between what he says and what I wanted to do. So it was really yeah. helpful. That's right. And uh, one of the reasons I joined ESS is because uh, in the book, uh, Matsumoto uh, recommended us uh, learn debate. So that's why I joined English Speaking Society to learn debate. Um, how was uh, your experience in college? In college? Yes. Uh, okay, okay. In college, I, I, 
I really enjoyed、uh, being a member of English speaking society and doing debate. So I, I didn't study、uh, very hard,、uh, but、uh, I worked very hard in club activities. And in, in college, college debate, you have to prepare a lot of materials、uh, to win the tournament. And、uh, I went to the library and did a lot of researches and made a lot of arguments. And you have to think of a lot of counter arguments to refute the, count,、uh, the, uh, the reputation from the opposite side. So it's a very、uh, good practice, not only for English, but also、uh, your analytical ability. And this、uh, experience of doing debate. Is a、uh, give me a lot of skills in analyzing the problems or doing the negotiations with our, our business people. So, I would say these kind of skills were much more important than the skills my, than my English skill when I started my business career. Because every day in the business, you have to analyze the issues, you have to analyze the problem, you have to find out the cause of the problems, you have to、uh, find out the solutions. And this process is, is exactly the same as the debate、uh, theory. So, what I learned debate is very pra pra practical in the business world. So, my experience in, in university in ESS、uh, helped a lot in my business career. It's interesting that I have the exact same kind of experience because I was also an ESS member in college. Oh, yeah, you did, yes. And I、yeah. also tried some debate as well as speech. And、mm -hmm. uh, I was reading newspaper every day and I was really interested in discussing issues. With、mm -hmm. native speakers of English as well as other、yeah. people who were visiting the university as exchange students.、Mm -hmm. So, apparently, the, the one, one common thread is we use English, but we're not really studying English for the sake of English, but you know, we are really studying other things. Exactly. Yeah, that is a very important aspect. I kind of,、uh, we consider it, it as part of the learning package, but,、uh, you、mm -hmm. know, and then English eventually helped us learn, even learn more. Yeah. And one of the concepts I think you invented was Matsumoto paradox. Uh huh. <laughs> If you can.、Um, that's, not, um, that's not what I invented, but.、Uh, coined I... the word. You coined the word. Yeah. Because.、Uh... <laughs> Since Mr. Matsumoto recommended us to、uh, do something using English, but not be obsessed with English, many people who use English and do business other than English. So, even myself well, didn't, didn't、uh, tell much about、uh, how to learn English after I started my business career. So, many people who learned、uh, English through Mr. Matsumoto. Don't remain in, his, in what he calls Egokai or English world.、Right. So many people in the English world don't talk about、uh, Mr. Matsumoto. So that is a paradox. As if he was forgotten, but he is not forget forgotten.、And、That's right. Continues yeah, to be relevant.、People. Yeah, I think、um, uh, those people who learned English or who were、uh, motivated by Mr. Matsumoto are in the business world, in the Gaishike Kiyo or So, go s h o s h a or the companies who use English. And those people are very busy and, and don't have much time about thinking about English. They have to think about their business. I look forward to the role of Kodokan as the organization will、mm -hmm. help us somehow、uh, feel reunited again.、Uh, That's right, yeah. yeah. But you, at the same time, you have to realize,、uh, especially the people in Kodokan, people have to realize that. There are many good circles or many activities outside of Kodokan, and they don't have to deny those people. And、uh, I know、uh, many people are working really hard in many, many circles or many, many clubs. So, those serious English learners、uh, tend to criticize each other, but I don't like that kind of a、uh, situation. And, 
inclusion, yeah. inclusive, being inclusive probably is the key. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think it would be great if a Kodokan people or other debate activity circ uh, other circle or for, for a lot, actually there are a lot of people who are learning debate in, in, in high school or university or even uh, businessmen are learning debate and these people have to intercommunicate because there are a lot of people who are good at debate and of course I don't mean to deny Kodokan people it's an excellent uh, activity but at the same time there are a lot of great people out there I have two last remaining questions. One okay. is that uh, you have two books in front, right next to you. Oh, I didn't realize <laughs> that. Yeah. And, and the other question is, uh, yeah. yeah, your final last words for um, uh, for our listeners, mm -hmm. if you have any advice for them. Well, uh, this uh, book. Uh, this is actually a great book and uh, I, I practice using the CDs in these books and I, I would say my listening comprehension uh, improved a, a lot so why don't you try these two, two books and last first last words for all english learners well, why, please enjoy doing what what yourself and you uh, without any stress you can enjoy studying english and do what you like to do and so that you can experience a new world and you will make a lot of opportunity so english is a basis to expand your world. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Noda, yeah. I mean, for uh, using your precious time for us. Okay, thank you for inviting. I enjoyed a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.